Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onin de Guzman, and our topic for today is the General Annuity, Grade 11, General Mathematics. At the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to, number one, illustrate general annuities, number two, find the future value and the present values of general annuities and compute the periodic payment of general annuity, and number three, calculate the fair market value of cash flows extreme that includes an annuity. And also in this video, we will talk about the three steps in general annuity. So number one, illustrate the cash flow. Number two, convert the interest rate. And number three, apply the formula. So let's have definition of terms. So if you say the general annuity, it is an annuity where the length of the payment interval is not the same as the length of the interest compounded period. While the general ordinary annuity is a general annuity in which the periodic payment is made at the end of the payment interval. Here are the examples of the general annuity. So monthly installment payment of a car, loan or house with an interest rate that is compounded semi-annually. So take note that you will pay monthly and the compounding rate is actually semi-annually. So they are not actually the same. Another example is paying a debt quarterly when the interest is compounded monthly. So you will pay the debt quarterly but the interest rate is compounded monthly. So here is the formula for future and present value of a general ordinary annuity. So the future value F and the present value P of a general ordinary annuity is given by this formula. As well as this. So take note that R is the regular payment. J is the equivalent interest rate per payment interval converted from the interest rate per period. While N is the number of payments. And take note also that J is equal to I all over M. If we say I, that is actually the interest per year, while M is the number of conversion per year. And N is the total payment, so that is M times T. So let's have example number one. Grace started to deposit 1,000 pesos monthly in a fund that pays 6% compounded quarterly. How much will be in the fund after 15 years? So before we solve this, let's identify the given. And the given are the following. So R is equal to 1,000. It means this is your regular payment. Then we have the total number of payments is actually 12 times 15, which is equal to 180 payments. Then we have the quarterly rate, which is 6%. Then we have the number of conversion is equal to 4. And finally, we want to find out the future value. Now, in order to solve this, let's have step number 1. So number 1 is illustrate the cash flow in the time diagram. So we have here, so the cash flow is actually 1,000 every month and at the end, we want to find out the future value after 180 payments. So we will move on to step number two. So that is convert 6% compounded quarterly to its equivalent interest rate for monthly payment interval. So it means that the future value one is equal to future value two. So take note that this is the future value for monthly payment. And while this one is the future value, if it is okay, pay quarterly. So again, we will substitute the value of i to the fourth a while ago, which is equal to 6%. So, so if we will simplify this 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to 4 all over 4, it will result to 1.015 rounded off to the third power raised to 4. However, there is a 12th power here. So it means that in order to remove the 12th power, I'll raise both sides of the equation by 1 over 12. So it will result to 1 plus i raised to 12 all over 12 is the same as 1.015 raised to 1 third because if you will reduce 4 times 1 over 12 so I can factor out 4 and 12 so we have now 1 third. 
simplifying it further. So, subtract both sides of the equation by 1. So, we come up with i raised to 12 all over 12 is equal to 1.0115. Okay, one okay, raised to 1 third minus 1. So, using our calculator, i raised to 12 all over 12 is equal to this value. Now, take note that i raised to 12 all over 12 is actually your uh, the interest rate per period, which is j. So, j is equal to your i all over n. i means the interest per year all over the number of conversion per year. So, this is the equivalent interest rate for okay, monthly payment interval. So, thus, the interest rate per monthly payment interval is this value. So let's move on to the third step. So that is apply the formula in finding the future value of an ordinary annuity using the computed equivalent rate. So that is J is equal to I all over N. Take note that J is actually your interest rate per period. So I is interest per year and M is the number of conversion which is equal to 12. So this is the value. So take note that the formula is equal to, okay, Future value is equal to R times the expression Y, 1 plus J raised to N minus 1 all over J. So substitute the value. So we have 1,000 times 1 plus this value raised to N is equal to 180 minus 1 all over the computed value of your interest rate per period. So, using the calculator, so we come up with a future value of 290,082 pesos and 51 cents rounded up to two decimal places. So, therefore, Grace will have 290,082 pesos and 51 cents in the pan after 20 years. So, let's consider problem number two. So, Beth borrowed an amount of money from Kathy. She agrees to pay the principal plus interest by paying 38,973.76 each year for three years. How much money did she borrow if the interest is 8% compounded quarterly? So first, let's identify the given. So the R is or the regular payment is 38,973.76. Okay, so we have the interest per year. So that is 8%. And the number of conversion is equal to 4. And the total number of payments is 3 payments. And we want to find out this time the present value. Again, in order to solve this problem, so let's have step number 1. That is illustrate the cash flow in the time diagram. So we have here the present value is unknown. But we know that okay, regular payment is this amount, 38,973.76 for 3 years. And we want to find out the present value. Let's move on to step number two. So that is convert 8% compounded quarterly to its equivalent interest rate for each payment interval. So take note that future value 1 is equal to future value 2. So meaning to say this is actually your future value if the payment is uh, monthly. And the other one is... Okay, future value if, if the payment is quarterly. So we have here, okay, so this is the yearly payment and this is the quarterly payment. And take note that the interest is 8%, so we substitute that, okay? So if we will simplify 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4, it will result to, okay, 1.02 raised to 4. And take note that 1.02 raised to 4, that is equal to your value of 1 plus i raised to 12 all over 1. Simplifying it further, so we will subtract both sides by 1. So we come up with i raised to 1 all over 1 is equal to 1.02 raised to 4 minus 1. Or this is equal to this value. And take note that this is equal to your J, or this is the interest rate per period. So therefore, the interest rate per payment interval is 8.24%. So we will move on to step number three. So that is apply the formula in finding the present value such that 
Okay, the J is equal to 8.24% or this equal to 0 0.082432. So we have the formula of the present volume such that our R is equal to 38,973.76, okay, and our J is 0 0.082432, and our N is equal to, okay, 3. So, therefore, P is approximately equal to 100,000 pesos. So, Beth borrowed 100,000 pesos from Cathy. Okay, for us to have a better decision on our investments, especially on counter offers, we need to determine the fair market value. The fair market value or economic value of a cash flow or payment stream on a particular date refers to the single amount that is equivalent to the value of the payment stream at that date. This particular date is called the focal date. Take note that the cash flow is a term that refers to payment received or we call that one as cash inflows. Then we have the cash or payments or deposits made is what we call cash outflows. Cash inflows can be represented by the positive number, while the cash outflows can be represented by negative numbers. Let us consider this example for the fair market value. So number three, Mr. De Guzman received two offers on a lot that he wants to sell. Mr. Ibangilista has an offer of 50,000 pesos and a million lump sum payment five years from now. Mr. Buenape has an offer of 50,000 pesos plus 40,000 every quarter for five years. Compare the fair market value of the two offers if money can earn 5% compounded annually. Which offer has a higher market value? So let's put this one in tabular form. So this is the offer of Mr. Evangelista, which is 50,000 down payment and 1 million lump sum after 5 years. While the offer of Mr. Buenape is 50,000 down payment and 40,000 every quarter for 5 years. And we want to find out the market value of each offer. Again, for our step number one, so we'll illustrate the cash flow of the two offers using the time diagram. So this is Mr. Evangelista's offer. So we have the down payment of 50,000 pesos and the lump sum of 1 million pesos after five years. Well, the offer of Mr. Buenape is 50,000 now. And we have the stream of 40,000 pesos okay, every quarter. So after we illustrate the cash flows, this time we will choose a focal date and determine the values of the two offers at the focal date. For example, the focal date can be the date at the start of the term. Since the focal date is at t is equal to zero, we would like to compute the present value of each offer. Now in order to compare the offers of the two persons, so let's start first with the offer of Mr. Evangelista. So since 50,000 is offered today, then its present value is still 50,000. The present value of 1 million offered 5 years from now has the formula of P, but the present value is equal to future value times 1 plus J raised to negative N. Take note that the J is equal to 5% and N is equal to 5. So this is 5 and this is the 5%. So using our calculator, so the present value is equal to 783,526.20. Now, so the fair market value is equal to down payment plus the present value. So we have 50,000 pesos plus 783,526.20. So the fair market value is 833,526.20 pesos. So let's move on to Mr. Benapest's offer. So first, we compute for the present value of general annuity with quarterly payments but with annual compounding period at 5%. So we solve the equivalent rate compounded quarterly of 5% compounded annually. So you have future value 1 is equal to future value 2. So again, so this is the quarterly payments for 5 years. Well, this is annual payments for five years. So we want to find out that, okay, the equivalent rate. 
So simplify it further. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Okay, 1 times 5 is equal to 5. And our i here is equal to 5%. Simplifying it further. So we have actually, so we have 20 power here. So to in order to remove, okay, the 20 here, we will raise both sides of the equation by 1 over 20. And I can factor out already 20. So we have here, 1 plus i raised to 4 all over 4 is equal to, okay, 1.05 raised to 1 fourth because 5 times 1 over 20 is equal to 5 over 20 or in lowest terms is equal to 1 over 4. Simplifying it further, so subtract both sides of the equation by 1. So I have here i raised to 4 all over 4 is equal to 1.05 raised to 1 fourth minus 1. So... Again, so this is equal to this value. And take note that this is equal to your J. And J is the interest rate per period. So therefore, the interest rate per payment interval is this value. Now that we get the value of J, so the J is equal to 0 0.01227234. So that is equivalent to your interest rate per period. Then we will use the formula of the present value such that our R is equal to 40,000 pesos. Then we have our J is this value. Then our N is 20. Then using our calculator, the value of the present value is equal to 705,572.68. If we will look for the fair market value of Mr. Venepes offer. So take note that so the fair market value is equal to down payment plus present value. So that his down payment is equal to 50,000 pesos plus the present value of his extremes is 705,572.68. So therefore, the fair market value is 755,572.68. To decide on our offer, so we will have our tabular form. So here is the offer of Mr. Evangelista, which is 833,526.20, while the offer of Mr. Venape is 755,572.68. So therefore, we can say that the offer of Mr. Evangelista is higher, and the difference is 77,953.52. That ends our lesson. So to summarize, there are three steps in solving general annuity. The so first one, illustrate the cash flow. Number two, convert the interest rate. And number three, apply the formula. Again, this is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Thank you. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.